Hello. Today's video involves hyperbolic trig functions. Um, hyperbolic trig functions are similar in some respect to the regular trig functions. The regular trig functions satisfy the uh, formula for the unit circle. In other words, um, the equation for the unit circle y squared, well, let me do it this way, x squared plus y squared is equal to 1, cosine squared theta, that way, plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. Cosine is associated with x based on your unit circle. This is x, y, also cosine theta, if this is 1, and sine theta. Well, with that, we have the uh, also the unit hyperbola in the horizontal direction. x squared minus y squared is equal to 1. And what satisfies that is the uh, tri um, hyperbolic trig functions, cosh, and cinch. If we have cosh squared of x plus cinch squared of x, that'll equal 1. Oops, minus, sheesh. Minus cinch squared of x, that's equal to 1. Okay? This is the basic identity. Now, you might ask, what are cosh and cinch? Do we have another way we can write these? Are they some way to understand what's happening? Yes. Cosh of x is e to the x plus e to the negative of x over 2. And cinch of x is e to the x minus e to the negative of x over 2. If you were to substitute those in, you would get the result. It would work out that the result comes out to be 1. It does work. Now, um, the other trig functions are defined in terms of sine and cosine. The other hyperbolic trig functions are defined in terms of cinch and cosh. In terms of derivative, the derivative of cinch of x is, using that formula I just gave you, This becomes 1 half. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The derivative of negative e to the negative x becomes plus e to the negative x, which hopefully you recognize. That is cosh of x. And the derivative of cosh of x would be the derivative of e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2 which is 1 half times derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Derivative of negative e to the negative x becomes plus e to the negative x, and that is cinch of x. So the derivative of cinch of x is cosh of x. The derivative of cosh of x is cinch of x. The other derivatives you can use the quotient rule just like we did with the other trig derivatives. Now let's do a couple examples with this derivative or these derivatives. Suppose I have y equals cinch of x cosh squared of x. My derivative, I have to use the product rule first, times the derivative of the second, which would be 2 cosh of x times cinch of x plus second cosh squared of x times the derivative of the first, which is cosh of x, and then we can combine stuff. 2 cinch squared of x, cosh of x, 
plus cosh cubed of x. And uh, one more example. If I have y equals e to the x sine x to the sinh of x. Hopefully you recognize I've got a function in as a base and a function as an exponent. The only way I can take that derivative is use logarithmic differentiation. Natural log of y is equal to the natural log of e to the x sine of x to the sinh of x. Using the rules of logarithms, we get sinh of x times the natural log of e to the x sine of x. The sinh comes out front as multiplication. I can then use rules of logarithms on the inside here. This is sinh of x times the natural log of e to the x plus the natural log of sine of x and the natural log of e to the x is just x. So we get sinh of x times x plus the natural log of sine x. And now we're ready to take the derivative. And so we get 1 over y dy dx is equal to, I have to use the product rule, sinh of x times the derivative of the second becomes 1 plus 1 over sine of x times cosine of x plus the second x plus natural log of sine of x times the derivative of the first, which is cosh of x, which means my derivative is sinh of x times 1 plus cotangent of x plus x plus the natural log of sine of x times cosh of x and all of this multiplied by y, my original function, which was e to the x sine of x to the sinh of x. And that is our derivative. Kind of ugly, but not that difficult as long as we keep things straight one step at a time.